Good morning, everyone. Oh, tight turn. It's a blustery, blustery day today. I don't know if you can see from there. Um, we've had a couple of stormy, blustery days. It still feels humid. Anyway, because of that, one of my tomatoes is now horizontal on the ground. That's fine because today's job, and that's why I've got a ton of Tupperware. I'm gonna get all the tomatoes off. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's just start. So, the plan today, the Tupperware is for any that are red, orange, any that have started to colour up, started to ripen. They will go in the tubs because getting them home in the granny trolley, they're the most likely to squish on the way home. And then all the green ones, they'll just go in a bin liner. <laughs> um, but actually, yeah, looking at how many there are, I think, do I <laughs> need to shout today over the wind? Looking at how many there are, I might have to do two trips. So what I will do, if that's the case, is um, the green ones can just sit in the shed for now. That'll be fine. When I come to take the green ones off, I'm going to snip them off as a truss, as a whole truss still. But for example, let me show you on this one. This is a great example. You can see on these ones where they're slightly darker green on top, they're a bit more mature. So I'll take the whole lot off like this, but then these really little ones, really teeny tiny ones, they're really not gonna to come to much. So they can snip off too and go in the compost. So I'll end up on this truss, for example. Those will come off, these will come home. And I was mentioning this the other day, a couple of, no, it was last year because we had a really wet summer. Thank goodness that saved me because I didn't have to be here watering. But it did mean that we got blight, mm, I think it's by the end of August. So I just harvested the lot, brought the lot home, put them all in my front south facing window. They ripened. It was all good. Now also, something else I want to show you, bear with me. I'm going to take all the plants out today too. Obviously because they're not going to do anything now are they? Apart from act as jolly great big wind sails. So I'll get them all out and amazingly just to say as well i will double check oh i can't get this string off um i will double check as i go around but amazingly i don't have any other blight great so because of that i will chop and drop crop chop and drop so by that i mean and it will happen with, sorry, excuse me. Um, it will happen with the beans, any other stuff that's kind of done, finished, the squash to a degree, is rather than chopping it all up and taking it to the compost, I wanna just chop this in half because it's unwieldy, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, rather than take it to the compost, I'll be chopping this up, you know, fairly fine and it's going to go, it basically just drops onto the bed. So let it compost in situ. And that's that's doing me, hold on, we're getting there, we're getting there. That's doing me a couple of favors. One, it's acting like a mulch 
and a bit of protection for the soil over winter because yeah exposed soil with the wind and exposed soil with lashing rain it really compacts it so you know we want to make life easy on ourselves don't we we don't want compacted soil come the spring it will compact a bit it always does um, so it acts as a bit of a protective barrier I still put cardboard on um, but of course it's helping to feed the soil over the winter so that come the spring all that lovely nourishment from this plant matter into the soil great but what I wanted to mention while I'm here and this is it's so blustery hopefully by the time I've done this and we move on to the next thing um, the wind might have blown itself out so with crop and drop I would normally go right just dump it all here however <laughs> Oh my goodness, my hair is everywhere. Right, let's let's do some pinning up of hair. I might have to put my hat on to keep it under control. Um, I'm actually not going to drop it on this bed. I'm going to drop it on the X courgette bed because I'm going to get this bed planted with a follow-on crop today. Yay! So the plan is broad beans for this bed, garlic for that bed, which is slightly different to normally the garlic would go following on from the potatoes I don't care and the reason I'm gonna do these two beds is because I think the soil will be manageable to get something else in today without killing me but what I wanted to show you now let's just pull this plant out just whack the soil off excuse me a second um, and I just want to make a note of this, particularly if this has been your first year of growing. If you've been growing for years and years, you can ignore me for a minute. But one thing I would suggest over this autumn as you're clearing beds, pulling plants out, is when you do, take an opportunity to look at the roots of the plant you're taking out. Um, have a look at, you know, how how long are they? How deep do they go? How wide are they? Do they spread out? Are there lots of little tiny fibrous roots like this? Are there some thicker roots? By having a little bit of a look at your plant's roots, it can help, well, you know, understanding our plant's anatomy always is a good thing anyway. But when we look at roots like this, it gives us a bit of an indication in future years about things like spacing so for instance when I used to grow my flint corn they their roots do go quite sideways mm, think about that but more than anything it, it tells us something about watering needs so you see a lot of these little fibrous ones I'm sure they've come about because we because of the drought this year and because I've been watering by hand that water tends to sit even when it's a really good soaking that water tends to sit in the top a few inches of the soil so of course the plant has kind of focused its roots in these top few inches a couple of the roots have gone further down looking for water so there's an argument that you know people would say you know don't be overzealous with the watering let the plant put its roots down to find the water but <laughs> there was just no water to find this year I did on a, on a few occasions throughout the summer put my spade in right in to, to look to see <laughs> anything with this wind to look to see you know was there moisture down there no so this is a plant that's <laughs> you can tell it's been a drought year it's focused its roots where the water is and the other thing about looking at the root ball of your plant, it's going to give you an idea about support, if it needs support, because if you think these plants got to eight, in some cases, nine feet tall, that's all that there was to anchor it into the soil. So again, it's indicating, right, this plant is going to need some support because otherwise, zoop, over it goes. So yeah, take... Oopla. Um, don't trip over your plants, but but do take the time to to just have a really a really good look. Um, 
you might have a really good look and think this hasn't informed me of anything <laughs> but I think I think one of the things about being a gardener is is being a bit of a scientist to be curious the, like I said the, I think the more we get to know our plants in terms of their anatomy the, the better we can think of in terms of their care and their needs it's going to take a while to get all of this done I think I'm going to run out of Tupperware. What a great position to be in. Happy days. Oh, slight squish. Yeah, it's going to take me a while. I'll bring you back shortly. I'll give you a closer look, hang on. But oh my goodness, what, what a fantastic tomato harvest this year. I am utterly delighted and grateful. I might need another freezer. <laughs> Let me give you a closer look. Um, yeah, come on. Absolutely tons of them. 
I should point out this is actually quite a deep wheelbarrow <laughs> so that is a lot of toms these are the last of the gardeners delight there's a few over here of the Guernsey Island you see with their distinct little bit of tiger stripes gorgeous the thing with those I think I was mentioning the other day hopefully having them ripening at home I have a I have a bit more control over them so that if as they ripen they split as they've done in the garden all summer I can quickly grab them and cook them and then a load of Amish paste I mean I was going to say they've been prolific Look, everything's been prolific this year it's fantastic and then here are some rose de burn although <laughs> They're trying to disguise themselves, particularly this one. Whoops, la. looks like a Granny Smith apple, doesn't it? So, oh, you know what? I think saying that I was going to get everything home in two trips was a bit optimistic because I think th this wheelbarrow alone is at least two trips. And then <laughs> on the table, goodness. This lot, this is probably going to pretty much fill the granny trolley today. They're in various stages of ripeness. Oh, they're starting to sweat a bit. I'll get them out of the sun. Some which are very, very, very nearly there. I reckon in the window at home, in about, well, less than a week, they will be done. And then others which are a bit more of a ways off. I just suddenly thought as well, getting that lot spread out at home, that is going to more, more than fill my window. So what I might do is, all of my larger ones, I spread them out in the shed, get all the little ones home, because I've actually got a tray on the go at home already. Oh <laughs> goodness me! Yeah, that's probably what I'll do, is get all the Gardener's Delights home, they can take up the whole window, plus a few of, oh look, hello rosy girl, my chair broke, see my chair is utterly, utterly broken, so it's there waiting for me to chop it up, um, yeah, the, whichever of these aren't ripe yet, those and those can come home with me over the course of a couple of days, the biggies can stay in the shed for now, and I just keep carting them home and getting them to the window space if, uh, as and when window space is available. Oh, just while we're here, because I don't think I showed you in the tour, the, the really straggling little celeries, they've all put on some lovely growth and all had that hor those horrible stringy leaves removed. So I could probably do with getting these in at some point. Rosie, do you want to do some planting for me, sweetheart? No thanks. Rusty's already been and gone, bless him. Um, right, broad beans, garlic. Actually, let me sit down a second and we'll talk about the broad beans and garlic. Oh, that's better. I did need to sit down. Amazingly, I've just looked at my clock, the clock on my phone, and it's telling me that, oh, let me see. This is so amazing. Let me just share this with you a moment. Hey, sweet girl. Even a year ago, I could barely get to stroke her. I mean, she'd come up to me, but the minute I bent down to give her a little, she'd run away again. I mean, she'd hang around, but run away. And here we are a year later, she gets into my lap the minute I sit down, which is lovely. She's kind of taken over from Poppy's old job of sitting into my lap and uh, forcing a break on me. Thank you, sweet girl. I do appreciate it. And I think you appreciate your cuddles, don't you? Right, as we were. Amazingly, as I was saying, getting all those tomatoes off, it's taken a little bit over an hour. Um, and I've, I've snipped out already, as I was going, I was snipping out the really little tiny ones that are like little peanuts that are rubbish. So I did, I have kind of cleaned them as I went, but yeah, a bit over an hour. And it's all, obviously it's all been standing on my feet. So now my knees are angry 
I need to do some sitting down. But I still need to get back out there to chop and drop the remaining plant material. Get all my poles out, get them cleaned up a bit and stashed. It's really, it is really breezy today, but the sun's out and it's gorgeous. So, just while we're sitting, I thought I'd quickly talk about broad beans. I don't know if I'm going to actually get to sow them today. Um, I think I might, by the time I've chopped and dropped, I might have reached my limit. Um, so, yes, I'm going to do an autumn sowing, as I have done for years and years. Um, I've tried some spring sowings too, but I like to do an autumn sowing because the harvest harvest comes much sooner the following year and when you've only got a small amount of space to grow in which I know a lot of people look at my plot and think it's it's huge I mean it's huge in terms of managing it oh, I can't manage it anymore but in terms of growing food for a whole year it's a really really tiny space so I try in as many beds as possible I try to get two crops per year you know, there's a lot of beds it's just not possible in. But the great thing about doing the broad beans in the autumn, it's always around mid-October. Um, they always follow the tomatoes. So actually, you know, in some years the tomatoes may be out in September. They can go in then. But it means that I should be getting a harvest end of April, beginning of May, and certainly by the end of May. By the end of May, they'll have been completely harvested. So that of course means I can follow them with something else. So this year, well, as it has been every year, I follow them with some brassicas, doesn't matter what kind, cabbages, broccoli, um, cavolo nero, purple spouting broccoli. It doesn't matter what, what brassica it is, but the brassicas can follow. So that means in the space of a year, I've had broad beans and some brassicas from that bed which is great and likewise the garlic obviously the garlic are going to go into one of the other tomato beds they would normally go in the spud bed I haven't got the spuds out yet that can wait they'll come out May another crop will go in so for me autumn sown broad beans are a no-brainer the variety I'm sowing <laughs> bit of a mix up because I've been saving my own seed for years so they're going to be a mixture of either aquadulce claudia look out for the word aquadulce I'll try to remember to put it in the um, description below because aquadulce is suitable for autumn sowing so aquadulce claudia and the other one is super aquadulce um, which tend to come up with a slightly longer pod maybe about two to three more beans per pod and again if you're in a small space um, if you're getting the same number of pods on each plant but each pod has two or three more beans that's almost like having another bit of a bed another bed um, but yeah mine are mixed up because I've been saving my own seed for years and they all come up quite big <laughs> so I don't know which is which so yeah look out for aquadulce I think, I'm not sure, so double check it, but I think Bunyard's exhibition is an... What are you doing? She's massaging me with her back feet. That's weird. Um, I think Bunyard's exhibition is another one that's okay for autumn sewing. With the... Ah, so what I should say as well is, one consideration is I don't tend to get that cold down here partly because I'm in the south of the country partly because I'm in London all cities are warmer and partly the little microclimate on my site although we're quite, we're quite exposed to wind it's, it has been a gusty one today and the wind comes across well you can see from the direction of the, of the tomatoes being toppled it comes from a sort of westerly southwest sorry never eat sh shredded wheat southerly it comes from the south whips across the site um, but we we still I think we are just a little bit warmer here I think I'm warmer here than Paul is in West London for example so they 
they can tolerate the winter. Obviously they can because it works for me. They won't tolerate hard frost for more than a couple of days. So what I will do when I first sow them, I'll put nets over them anyway, just ordinary mesh, um, just to stop foxes, cats, etc. thinking that it's a nice new bit of soil that's bare for them to go digging or scratching in. But then also what I'll bear in mind in as we go into the winter, I heard I heard the other day, but we hear it every year, don't we? I saw it on my MSN newsfeed, I think. They're saying we're going to have a really hard winter. It's going to be really freezing all winter. And I don't know whether they're just doing a scaremongery thing because of fuel prices and all that. But anyway, I, I will. I'm a gardener. I keep my eye on the forecast anyway. And if it looks like we're going to be getting down to freezing, especially if it's going to be for a few days and especially if it's going to stay cold in the day even when the sun's up i'll chuck some fleece over them so i'll keep those environ mesh hoops uh, um net hoops over them so, you know my little tunnels that's what i'm talking about but then if it looks like oh it's going to be frosty we're, on top of those tunnels i'll just fling a load of fleece just give them that little bit of protection and that's what I've done in the past and it's worked perfectly fine we've had times when I've actually had snow fall before I've had a chance to get here and it, all they've had is the environment net tunnels snow sitting on the top and they've been fine they can get a bit of frost damage um, you'll see it the, the the living part of the plant becomes necrotic and turns black but they can recover so even if you do get a bit of frost nip it's always worth nipping out that damaged part because it's not going to grow back <laughs> and but from deeper further down in the plant it can reshoot so yeah i would say if you're emptying beds right now at this time of year and they're going to be empty all winter why not grab some broad beans to put in and have a nice early harvest next may or so i adore broad beans they're gorgeous i'm often asked what do they taste like i think in the united states i don't think you have broad beans generally do you um i know some folks say oh it's fava beans i don't know if they they actually are exactly the same but How to describe them? Are they slightly more earthy? If you can have sweet and earthy at the same time, because they are a sweet bean, sweet and earthy, let's say. But the thing is, when you cook them, because otherwise I hate them. Otherwise, um, this the outer skin is really tough. Cook them, uh, you know, steam them for sort of five or ten minutes and then this whole outer skin you'll see it goes grey and wrinkly it looks so unappetising but you slip that outer skin off and is revealed the brightest emerald green jewel you can imagine and that's the bit you want I know people who never skin them or sec it's called second skinning who don't bother but for me no thank you that outer skin is tough and almost bitter so if you do try them for the first time Tie them whole, but if you go, oh, that's rank, don't give up on them. Try skinning them. Fiddly, but definitely worth it. Right, right, <laughs> Miss Rosie. I thought when you jumped down, I thought when she jumped down a second ago, she was telling me it's time to get back to work, and I jumped back again. So I'm going to put you on the day bed. I think that's enough of a rest. It's now time to go and chop and drop that lot. <laughs> it's going to take me ages. Maybe it'll be quicker than I think. Doesn't matter, it's sunny. Right, cracking on. Oh. Nearly done. Wait for a second. 
I'm trying to feel if it's going to calm down. I don't think it is. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> it feels like it wants to chuck down. What I wanted to say is, it's crazy to think that I was picking off those red tomatoes at 10. Oh, here comes the sun, 10 this morning. It's just gone 2.30, four and a half hours later and I'm just finishing with the tomatoes. Harvested, poles out, cleaned and stashed, chopped, ready to drop. It doesn't look like much, does it, for 9, 18, for 36 plants. But of course, I did about three weeks ago massively defoliate and top them out and chop them up. And that's all in one of the compost bins. So that's ready to use on another bed. But yeah, four and a half hours later, unbelievable. No, I'm not going to do the raw beans today. I'm done. But I'm, I am going to go and get this on the ex courgette bed before it starts to rain. I think. It's feeling stormier and stormier by the moment. Quick sticks! Oh, blah! Doesn't that look bare now? Oh my goodness. All right, my lovelies. <laughs> my belly says it's lunchtime, my knees are grumbling, it's time for me to go. So until the next one, please look after yourselves. Cheerio on this rather blustery day. <laughs>